Welcome everyone who's joined or who is watching the recording of this webinar. My name's Natasha and yeah, I'm super excited to be able to guide you through some breathing exercises tonight. And I've just been reading some of the questions that have come in, so I'll try and cover some of these in tonight's session. Um, I was diagnosed with juvenile idiopathic arthritis at age 10 and had a few years of remission in my teenage years, but then it came back with a vengeance when I was 18 and this then got diagnosed as psoriatic arthritis. And I, yeah, went down the holistic route in my mid-20s um, because I knew I knew there was other things that could help me on my journey. And that's when I found yoga. And then this led me into breath work. And yeah, when I was 27, I went and lived in Thailand uh, with my teacher. So I went and studied yoga over there. And then I ended up living with him for two years at his healing center over there. And I got to mentor with him, learning all sorts of breath work techniques for different ailments and different things going on in the body. So I'll be sharing some of those tonight and I'll be sharing the ones that have really helped me on my journey with arthritis, especially through the really painful times, the really frustrating times, the anxiety and anything else that comes up for us on this journey. And then I will leave some time at the end for some Q and A's to come through and hopefully answer some of those for you. Um, last year, I underwent a double hip replacement, and I have to say the breathing definitely helped me go through this, and a couple of your questions were about waiting for joint replacements and what can be done in that time, so I hope to answer those questions tonight. And yeah, to teach you all some free tools because the breath is free and that's why it's awesome because we have it available to us all the time um, that, yeah, you can use anytime when you're experiencing the pain and frustrations of living with arthritis. So I'm going to start by talking a little bit about anxiety, uh, mainly because this has been one of my top symptoms of living with an autoimmune condition is the amount of anxiety that it brings up, whether that's like appointments or waiting for a diagnosis or <clears throat> anxiety about the future or procedures or blood tests or anything else. There's definitely some breathing techniques we can tap into that really helps with this. So in the yogic traditions or in yoga, and if you've ever been to a yoga class, um, sometimes you might notice the teacher talking about exhaling, um, lengthening the exhales to help with calming the mind. So when we're facing anxiety and racing thoughts, the best kind of breath to start with is to start extending those exhales. And that's just going to help quieten the frontal cortex of the mind. Um, but before we get started, I'm just going to backtrack a bit. Um, I'll talk about the three sections of the lungs and take you through an exercise just to open up the airways um, and to get the breath flowing before we go into specific techniques. Um, a couple of people wrote in about being on warfarin um, or any medications. I've been on various medications over the journey and the techniques I'll be sharing tonight are all safe to do with these medications. Um, that being said, always listen to your body. You are your best um, doctor at the end of the day. So if any techniques don't feel good for you, or bring up any pain or uncomfortable sensations, please back off. Um, but from a science standpoint, um, these techniques are safe uh, for everyone to do. They're nice and gentle, nice and easy. We won't be doing any crazy hyperventilating or holotropic breath work, which is quite a craze at the moment. They'll just be, yeah, really nice, gentle, simple techniques for you to follow on with. So 
when we're experiencing this anxiety and these emotions that come up with arthritis, anger, anxiety, grief, naturally and, and pain in itself, naturally the like a human wants to like curl in um, and that creates a lot of tightness in the chest. So I thought we'd start tonight's session just by opening up through the chest and belly. And there's three parts of the lungs. And that's your diaphragm, which is your belly breath. So if I refer to a more belly breath, breathing into your belly, that's essentially breathing into your diaphragm, which sits just at the bottom of your lungs here. And as we breathe into that, it's almost like we're inflating our belly because um, that's kind of where the diaphragm sits. So we're going to start this evening just by doing a few belly breaths and feeling into that. And hopefully you can see me here. But what helps with this is placing one hand over your belly. And if you like, you can close your eyes if that helps throughout this. And we're going to start just by taking the breath down into the belly. So inhaling through the nose. And you're just going to imagine that you're inflating your belly like a balloon. So the air is going down, pushing on the diaphragm, which is pushing the belly out. And then as you exhale, drawing your navel towards your spine, so your belly button towards your back. And that's just going to help push the air out. So as you inhale, belly feels like a balloon. And as you exhale, drawing navel to spine helping to squeeze out that air. And as you breathe here into the belly, I'll just share more about this breath. So breathing into the belly is the fastest way to bring us into our parasympathetic nervous system. So it's our rest and digest, our calm, so just by breathing into the belly, it can help center us into this and take us out of that fight or flight. And as you're breathing here into your belly, see if you can really fill up the bottom of the lungs as much as possible. And you can go as slow as you like. So... If you struggle with asthma, um, any kind of lung scarring, the slower the better, just to get your body used to these exercises and this movement. And again, tuning in with your body and how it feels. Someone did write about having lung fibrosis and doing exercises that might exuberate this so again by doing them nice and slow so starting off really slowly and just taking in as much air as is comfortable for you and your lung capacity at this moment means you can slowly build up over time because the lungs are like a muscle so as we need to stretch our muscles you know the first attempt we might have at touching toes or doing any kind of stretching will be really tight and over time as we practice these things the muscles and the lungs themselves will have more space and you'll be able to take deeper breaths in so we'll just do a couple more of those belly breaths So that's the lower part of our lungs, the diaphragm. And then we have the mid chest, which is kind of around the rib cage, around your heart center here. And for a lot of people and myself included, um, they can get uh, inflammation here in their sternum. Um, and this exercise has actually been really helpful for me in those moments. So when I've had a sternum flare up, as part of my arthritis, again, I, my body closes and this just really helps to get it more spacious and open and starts bringing in some blood flow and oxygen to that area. So for this exercise, depending on your hands and shoulders and what's comfortable for you, 
you can either have hands down on your lap or if it helps, just bring your hands on the bottom of your rib cage here if that's accessible to you and your shoulders or you can put them around like so or cross them over if that feels more comfortable for your shoulders. <clears throat> so tuning in with where you're at and then breathing into this area if it helps to close your eyes, you can do so. And you're just going to visualize breathing into the middle section of your lungs, so into the chest. So I'm going to use my hands here to kind of visualize what the rib cage will look like. So as you inhale, nice and slowly expanding that rib cage out. And then as you exhale, bringing it back in. And when I first started this exercise a few years ago with my teacher, I couldn't move my rib cage at all. It felt so stuck because of the inflammation and everything else I had going on. And with practice over time, I just slowly started breathing into this area. And over the weeks, uh, my lung capacity has gotten um, larger and larger. And over the years now, it keeps expanding. So don't be discouraged as we go through this if they feel really difficult at first. Um, I know I, I too couldn't do many of these exercises at the beginning. So just going really slowly at your pace, imagining you're just stretching that muscle. So inhaling, taking rib cage out, exhaling as you knit the rib cage back together. And while you're doing this breath technique, as I'm talking you through it, just see if you can keep shoulders nice and relaxed. We have a tendency uh, when we start doing these breathing exercises to bring shoulders up. So keeping them nice and relaxed as you do these. So just doing a few more of those at your pace. Remembering that slow is good when we're doing new exercises and trying new things on this journey. So breathing into this middle section of the lungs around the heart and the rib cage and moving this is really helpful for inflammation through the sternum and it's also really helpful when we're feeling anxious or we feel any grief or any of those emotions that make us curl in and want to protect ourselves this is really good to help open up this area and bring life and breath back into the body it's also really good for moving emotions so don't be surprised if you're practicing this at home and you're doing a few, sometimes different emotions can arise. And on a holistic level, um, this is because of all those times where we curl in, trying to survive or protect ourselves through the emotions. Sometimes when we open up areas of our body, um, this causes energy and emotions to flow through. And although not all of us like to feel emotions at different times. This can also be really helpful in our processes as we move through this journey of living with arthritis and all of the things that come with it because we are going to experience uh, an array of emotions. So this one's really good to tap into there and also to really help move anxiety. Um, we hold a lot of anxiety in our belly and chest. So breathing into any of these areas just going to really help move that energy. 
And then the last section of our lungs is the upper section of our lungs. So more into the collarbone and front here. And I'm going to share a couple of exercises to open up this area here and with a lot of modifications. So if anyone here has shoulder or chest inflammation, uh, there'll be modifications for you. So one way to do this breath, which is a lot on the shoulders, so I'll demonstrate it first and you can tune in whether this is something that you're able to do at the moment. But one way to do this is to inhale, take shoulders all the way up to ears or as far as feels good for your body. And then as you exhale, we're just going to relax the shoulders down. And the exhale can come either through the mouth in the form of a sigh, which feels good. Um, and that sigh helps the body to let go and relax. Um, or it can be just out through the nose if that's more comfortable for you. So option one is taking shoulders up and then relaxing them all the way down. If you do have shoulder pain, another modification that's really nice to do is inhale and slowly bring your shoulders up and round. And then as you exhale, taking them back and down. So if that's more comfortable for you, inhaling, going up and exhaling, taking them down. If your shoulders can't move or don't want to move this evening or whenever you're practicing these breath techniques, just simply closing your eyes and visualizing breathing into this space. And it can help if you can have a hand placed over your collarbone just to visualize yourself breathing into the upper area of the chest. And then relaxing down. So as you practice this, Again, I'll just talk through the benefits. So when we're dealing with a lot of stress and tension in the shoulders and gripping, um, this is a really helpful technique to begin to bring movement and breath into these areas. However you're moving. So that's a quick summary of the three sections of the lungs. Um, and when we start to think of the lungs in three sections, we realize like quite like how big the lungs are, you know, how much space they take up in our body um, and how little we might use them in our day to day life if we're not aware of how we're breathing or we're not using breathing techniques. So this can really help open up a lot of the body, especially through the torso as we breathe um, and as we are taking in deeper breaths as well um, you might start to notice sensations in different parts of the body so Linda mentioned her jaw fluttering um, sometimes people get a lot of sensations down their arms um, or legs and this is due to an increase of oxygen especially when we first start incorporating breath techniques into our life um, if we're not used to deep breathing at all, we are bringing in that extra oxygen and that extra oxygen means increased circulation and blood flow, flow through the body. So that might be the extra tingling or energy that you feel moving through your body as you begin to practice these techniques. So opening up this the lungs with those techniques as I said, can be really helpful for opening up this area of the body and moving through any tension that we hold here. And the more open we feel here, the more oxygen we can take into our lungs. So the more we practice those deep breaths, the greater our lung capacity gets, the greater the oxygen through our body gets, the greater the circulation through the body gets. And with any joint um, issues like arthritis or injuries, we really do need to be getting blood flow and oxygen to the joints. Um, 
I'm, I know Arthritis New Zealand shares a lot of exercise tips um, to get moving, but the breath can be another way to get the circulation and blood flow moving, especially if you're experiencing a flare or the times where you perhaps can't move as much as you'd like to, or on the days where um, you can be bed bound or couch bound, depending on how severe your flare up is. Um, the breath is a really good way to start increasing, um, increasing that blood flow and circulation around the body. Um, one of the questions I had was, um, after a deep sleep, people often experience a lot of stiffness in the morning or even not after a deep sleep, but after lying in bed all night. Um, it's common to have morning stiffness as one of the symptoms of arthritis. And someone asked, how do I get things going in the morning? And what I love to do is when I wake up is to lie there and deep breathe into these parts of my lungs. So I'll just be lying there and just start taking in some really deep breaths, filling up my lungs, filling up that chest and exhaling it all out. And essentially you can think of it as reawakening your body or bringing life back into your body after sleeping. So when we sleep, we breathe quite shallowly. Um, shallowly, I don't know if that's a word. We, we breathe shallow. Um, and by starting to take those deep breaths in the morning, we're really just starting to bring in that increased blood flow and oxygen. Um, and that's just going to help things get moving before we get out of bed. So, yeah, that's what I would do um, or give give a go if you are struggling with morning stiffness is before you get up, before you do anything is when you wake up, just bringing in some really deep breaths into your body, nice and slow, like we've been doing and increasing that blood flow and oxygen through the body. Um, and that's going to help us when we go to get moving all of our joints. So I saw a question pop up when breathing into each section of the lung, do I belly breathe too? So yeah, I just thought I would show you the three different sections and what you can call on at any time. Some people find it hard to breathe into all of them at the same time. So you can concentrate on either one um, depending on what you want. So belly breath's really good for calming. Um, it's also really good for digestion. So I'll often use it um, to help me after eating or before eating. If I'm feeling nauseous, sometimes with the symptoms or medications, I'll start breathing into this area um, and that can really help um, with any tension here as well. So I get a lot of anxiety and it's always in my stomach. So I'll belly breathe here. Um, but if I'm feeling tight in my chest, I might um, start doing the breath here into my chest to open that up. Um, when I do yoga and these breathing exercises, I yawn a lot. Why? Um, so we are moving into parasympathetic nervous system by doing these deep breaths. And one of the ways, another way that we, our body signals us to move into parasympathetic nervous system is through yawning. So yawning, yawning is a somatic um, technique. I'll sometimes use it in my somatic classes. And that just signals that we're going into the parasympathetic rest and digest state of our body. So it's common to be yawning through yoga or through anything relaxing because we start moving from our fight or flight, go, 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 got to get all the work done into our rest and digest, calm state, our parasympathetic nervous system. Um, I'll come back and answer some questions in a little bit. I just really wanted to show you guys some techniques for anxiety. So as I was mentioning before, going into the three parts, extending the exhale is really helpful for anxiety. So I thought we would practice together a really relaxing breath that I like to use. And this one uses a breath count. So for this, you can either choose to breathe into your belly or chest, wherever's more comfortable. Um, 
but sometimes breathing into the belly is really helpful for the anxiety, depending on where you're feeling it. And for this, I'm going to do a breath count of an inhale for four and an exhale for six. We're going to start with, I'll just quickly answer one question because it does come to this. I'm feeling a bit dizzy after doing deep breathing. Is this normal? So yes. Um, as I mentioned before, with the feelings of the tingles through arms and legs, if we're not used to doing any deep breathing at all, and then we start deep breathing, we are going to feel an increase of that oxygen through the body. And that oxygen can make us a little bit dizzy. So if anyone's feeling dizzy throughout it, just come back to slower breathing. Um, and take your time to increase that lung capacity and build up the deep breathing um, rather than going in um, straight away and doing a lot of deep breaths. So yeah, always tuning into your body. And you might find, depending on the time of day you do it, that dizziness will vary. Um, so yeah, it's important to always tune into your body at each moment um, to see what feels right for you. So for this Breathwork for Anxiety, I invite you to find a nice, comfortable position. Uh, we'll do it for a few minutes so you can really feel the effects of this breath. And you can choose to be lying down if that's more comfortable um, or sitting on a chair or on the couch or wherever's good for you. And if it's good for you, closing down your eyes we're just finding a nice spot on the wall or floor in front of you to focus on. We're going to do a few rounds of this and I'm going to count you through it. Um, and we're going to start with an inhale for four and an exhale for six. And then I'll be extending the exhale through to eight. So we'll start just by taking a big breath in. Exhaling all the air out. And we're going to inhale for four, two, three, four, exhale for six, two, three, four, five, six, inhale, four, two, three, four, exhale, six, two, three, four, five, six, inhale, four, two, three, four, exhale, six, two, three, four, five, six, inhale, four, two, three, four, exhale, six, two, three, four, five, six. Breathing through the nose, inhale, four, two, three, four. Exhale, six, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, four, two, three, four. Exhale, six, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, four, two, three, four. Exhale, six, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, four, two, three, four. Exhale, six, two, three, four, five, six. Now continuing at your own pace, counting in your head. Inhale for four, exhale for six. And you can go at the pace that feels right for you. So it might be a bit faster or slower. The next time you exhale, extend this exhale to a count of eight. So we're doubling the length of the exhale to our inhale. And as you're breathing through this, inhaling for four, exhaling for eight, see if you can really fill up your lungs with that inhale, taking deep breaths, or as deep as feels comfortable for you. 
without you getting dizzy. Just completing one more round of this breath. And when you finish that round, before opening your eyes or coming back to looking at the screen, just take a moment to tune into your body and notice any effects that this breath has had on your mind or body. Notice if you feel a little bit calmer and if the mind feels a little bit more quiet. And then slowly opening your eyes, coming back to the space. So by lengthening the exhale, what we're doing is we're quietening the prefrontal cortex of our, our brain. And that's the part that loves to talk the monkey mind. Um, so this technique's really good for quietening those thoughts, um, toning them down. Um, and even if you notice you're having a lot of thoughts whilst doing these exercises, um, they can still be really beneficial. And, um, yeah, with practice, you'll notice that your mind starts to become quieter with that. With that exercise of the extended exhales, another thing you can do to add to it is to tuck your chin slightly. So the next time you go to practice this, inhaling for four, exhaling for six or eight, having that extended exhale, tucking that chin also helps to quieten this part of the mind. So it can just be an extra um, added benefit. And also doing any type of forward fold, so sitting and forward folding, um, in yoga, these poses get used often to quieten the mind and come into a more quiet practice. Um, and the back bends that we do where we really extend, um, enliven the mind or create more energy. So keeping that in mind, if you want an extra technique, if your mind's being particularly loud, um, the thoughts are getting the best of you, just tucking your chin slightly to your chest, Again, working with your body and your neck and doing that technique with your chin tucked slightly in or whilst in a forward fold of any sort. So, yeah, I hope that helps and that you felt some of the effects of that. Another technique for anxiety I would love to cover is something I used a lot when waiting for my hip surgery. Um... So I had to wait nine months due to some complications and I was bed bound in that time and I was very worried about my future naturally and um, a technique that just really helped me through when panic would arise, I'd get quite a lot of panic attacks, is what I love to call the paper bag hand technique and if you've ever been on a plane or watched a commercial, um, they'll give you that paper bag and you breathe into it. And this technique does the same thing, but we're just going to be able to use our hands. So it can be done at any time of the day, um, in the car, after an appointment, before an appointment, before a surgery, before a procedure. Um, I did this in the lead up to going into my surgery and it was really helpful. But um, yeah, all it is is using your hands as the paper bag and I'll demonstrate it. And if you're sitting in a chair or wherever you're sitting, it's coming forward into that forward fold again. So um, 
I'm I'm sitting on two bolsters here, so I'll demonstrate like that. Bringing your hands together into a cup shape, into like your paper bag, and covering your nose here as you would with the paper bag. And we're just going to come into a forward fold, closing your eyes and just taking some really deep breaths into your hands. And again, trying to draw out that exhale. So you want your exhale to be longer than your inhale. And this is really good um, if your experience of panic attack or someone uh, wrote in about their teenager um, experiencing a lot of anxiety. So teaching your kids this is a really good one as well. So just getting them to cup or anyone else in your life, cup their face. Taking big breaths in through the nose as well is really helpful. So when we are in those panic states, we quite often start shallow breathing through the mouth. So, and that's going to add to the rise of anxiety. So if we can start to breathe through the nose in those situations when possible, um, as long as you don't have any obstructions or a blocked nose and just coming in, taking those deep breaths into your hands and this, yeah, this technique has been a real lifesaver multiple times in the hospital for me so <laughs> using this technique when you need and sometimes um depending on yeah how bad is coming right into that forward fold so really tucking yourself in and that's that's the body that's the body's protection mechanism and it really calms you down tucking the chin in breathing into the hands extending the exhales um so that they're longer than your inhales, really going to help to quieten down any panic, anxiety, and really help with those panic attacks, um, especially when there's no paper bag available. And I'll just show you another technique for um, anxiety as well. And this one's been really great for me in waiting rooms or when waiting for news or an appointment or results. Um, or something that I'm particularly anxious about. And again, it's using the hand with the breath. So we've got five fingers, um, or perhaps you don't have many fingers we do have. Not everyone has five fingers. Um, but we're going to use our other hand to trace our fingers like so. And we're going to sync up the breath with this. So starting here, we're going to breathe in as we go up. So up the top of the thumb, and then we're going to exhale as we go down. And then inhaling as we go up. And again, this can be done at your pace with your breath. Exhaling as you come down. Inhaling as you come up. Exhaling as you go down. Moving your way through each of your fingers and what this does bringing in this movement with the breath is brings focus to the mind so if the mind's focused on what's about to happen and the anxiety and the future thoughts this can just really help bring our focus back to the present moment also touch is really important for getting us into our bodies Often when we're anxious or panicked, we get right into our heads and right into the thoughts. This just helps us come back to our body and just really gives us that nice visual to breathe with. And you can go as slow, as slow as you want um, to help regulate your breathing in those moments. And yeah, what's great about this one, again, is it can be done anywhere because it's your own hands and your own breath. So you don't need any other tools. Um, someone's just asked is there any breathing exercises for back pain yes so same as I mentioned through the front through the sternum breathing in here can really help to open this area up when we're feeling inflamed here um, and just the same through the back through the back of the spine what we can do or what's really helpful is do that chest breath, but imagine you're directing the breath into your back. And for this, it can either be done against a wall or lying down is really helpful. So by doing it up against the wall 
you're going to have something on your back to help you with the visualization and to breathe into your back. So I'll direct you through a couple of minutes um, now if you'd like to give this a go. So either lying down on your back or with your back against a hard surface, surface or a wall. And what you're going to do is bring your focus to your chest and inhale. Expand your lungs out again with that inhale, nice and slow. But this time you're just going to imagine you're sending your breath to your back. So as you do this, you'll feel your back against the floor or against the wall and you'll feel your back expand against the wall or the floor. That's why it's really helpful to have that surface behind you. So as you inhale and in, really taking in the breath to your back. Now, if it is uncomfortable to lie on the floor or to have your back against the wall, depending on what's going on through the spine for you, you can just find any, any seated position to do that in. And it really is all about the visualization for this. So for me, I like to close my eyes because that really helps me to go in and visualize. And then I just imagine I'm sending the breath to the back. And that might sound weird at first, um, especially if you're not used to doing any of these um, types of practices. But um, I like to think of it as um, energy flows where attention goes. So if our attention is towards our back and we're just directing the energy or the breath to that, and really like helping to stretch out through the back with those inhales. We'll just give you another minute to practice that one. Um, another breath I like to do for back pain myself when I get it, demonstrate this side on, is bringing in movement with the breath. Um, so again, as you know, that movement really does help to lubricate all of our joints and to help with the pain as hard as it is when we're in pain to get moving. Um, so something I like doing is sitting in a chair or cross-legged or kneeling on the floor and moving through a few um, what I would call in yoga seated cat cows but what we're going to be doing is as you inhale taking the chest forward and the chin just slightly up and then as you exhale rounding the back so again just deep breathing but adding in some movement with the breath and that's just going to help the breath move through this area and free up some of that back pain um, through the mid, through the mid chest um, and a bit through the lower back. Ah, breath for sleep. Who doesn't want a good sleep, right? Um, so my favorite breath for sleep is a technique called the four, seven, eight breath um, and we'll do a few rounds together um, sitting up or if you're lying down and go to sleep you can always watch the recording but this is quite a potent technique that um, they do use in the military to help them get to sleep um, and we're going to inhale for a count of four hold the breath in for a count of seven and then exhale for a count of eight. And I'll count the first few through like I did with the last one. And then I'll get you guys to go at your pace because some people will breathe faster or slower than others. Um, but I'll just set a, a um, one pace to start with. So yeah, finding a nice comfortable seated position or yeah, lying down um, if you can't sit up um, because of back, back pain or any other pain. And again, closing the eyes if that feels nice for you. 
And we're going to start just by taking a big breath in and then a big breath out. And start with an inhale for four, two, three, four. Really fill up the lungs. Hold for seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale four, two, three, four. Hold for seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to get you to do this one at your pace because I feel everyone's going to have quite a different pace with this four, seven, eight, because it is quite different with the breath hold. And as you hold the breath in, it's important not to like strain. So there's no need to be like and hold it in with your shoulders up. So instead, as you breathe in, just nice deep breath. And as you hold, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the face and just holding the breath in and then exhaling for a count of eight and yeah, I will just reiterate that it is very normal to feel dizzy with any of these techniques. So just really going at your pace and slowing it down if you do start to feel dizzy um, or any other sensations that don't feel nice for you. So inhaling for four, holding the breath in for a count of seven. And then exhaling for a count of eight. We're just finishing up on this next round and before opening your eyes, just taking a moment again to feel the effects of that breath on your body, how it feels for you. That one I really like to do when I'm in bed and if I can't get to sleep um, initially, I'll use that breath for as many rounds as I need. Um, or if I wake up in the middle of the night and I need something to help me get back to sleep, that's what I often will practice. Matthew asks, suggest suggestions for breathing techniques with fused ribs and restricted breathing. Depending on how fused they are, um, you can still breathe into that area and just go at your capacity. So I would just work really slowly at breathing in and just yeah moving to what feels comfortable for you and um, your spine depending on where the fusion is um, but yeah it's still safe to breathe into the lungs but being really gentle and mindful of that and just increasing as you go um, as you practice more and more so I'll share again like when I first went to breathe into my lungs it felt like I had a vice around, like I had so much inflammation here. It felt locked. And my teacher was like, okay, and breathe in as like, I am. <laughs> like, Nothing's moving. And I was like, I know. <laughs> um, but it just, yeah, really took practice over the years and becoming more aware of it. Um, yeah, just with anything and just really because the more we practice, the more the lungs will stretch because they're not like set in stone. They're an organ that can stretch. And that's why I really love breathing and feeling that capacity more and more as practice more and more. Carlos asks um, about tendonitis in his left shoulder. And is that something that you can alleviate with breathing? Mm, I would, and someone asked further down as well, about knees and would they just direct the breath to knees similar to back um what i would suggest with tendonitis um because tendonitis is quite in, like inflamed from what i know as mm -hmm. well so you don't want to be aggravating it so 
if these movements don't feel good for you, I wouldn't be doing them or even that any kind of movement that's not feeling good. But um, sometimes when I've had tendonitis, I'll just do really gentle movements with the breath or I'll just sit and breathe and I'll direct it into that area of my body. So if I can't move that area and it's particularly painful, I'll just close my eyes and visualize sending breath into that area. And that can often help quite a lot um, more than we realize or expect. Yeah, that focus, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and just something else I wanted to mention, when you do have specific um, concerns, so you've had some surgeries or you've had some injuries, um, if you're working, well, you should be working with a physiotherapist or an occupational therapist. They will have knowledge around this as well. So you can always ask them, and because they're right there with you and they're seeing you, they know your particular um, individual circumstances. So they'll be able to give you good tips as well. So don't be, um, I don't know, worried or concerned that these health professionals are going to look at you weird if you ask about breathing, because it is something that uh, occupational therapists are equipped to handle those questions for you too. We have had quite a lot of people asking about knees, and yeah, moving is quite important if you're sitting all day at a desk but I'm sure the breath the focus breathing can alleviate some of that as well yeah with knee well with with all the joints like we know how important movement is um Mm -hmm. so yeah like looking at resources on your website arthritis new zealand or asking your physio or occupational therapist um but yeah, I find I have found like directing the breath into air, any areas that have been sore really helpful as well. And um, I think on another level, doing that that visualization and breathing into those areas sends like like love and attention there. And I can speak for myself having joint pain. I often get quite angry at my joints and not very nice towards them. So it can be just a really nice practice and quite soothing to breathe into these areas with nice loving thoughts and not angry thoughts at them being sore so that can go a long way as well with helping with pain um just being like really nice to yourself and directing that energy to it and someone else has asked about um making noise when breathing in a group um whenever I've done things in groups actually making those loud fire breathing sounds has been quite encouraged so I don't know if this is a problem um maybe you just need to be proud of your loud breath (laughs) but um if you do want to breathe quieter do you have any tips around that (laughs) so (laughs) if someone wants to breathe quieter perhaps because they're like in out somewhere on an event um I mean I say breathe loud yeah Um, Sound always helps. Um, and that's why I always encourage the size because, again, it's another somatic thing like the yawn of because when we hear those sign sighs or we make those sighs, automatically, like, I'll be like, like you start relaxing the muscles. Mm. So I think sounds are great. But yeah, if you are somewhere, um, perhaps you don't want to be heard. I don't know how you would breathe quieter I guess just go really slow and gentle (laughs) they do say that they don't get the same um, level of relaxation when they breathe quietly so yeah it might not be a you know your problem (laughs) I would I would go loud especially if I'm at home or no one's around or if I'm teaching a group class I always encourage sounds uh there is one for brain fog um Probably that answer might take a bit longer than what we have left. We've got a couple of minutes left. Like initially, just by breathing deeper, it's going to help with that brain fog because it's going to get that extra oxygen um, through the body and to the brain. So, yeah, in the couple of minutes we have, I would just keep practicing the breathing deeper. And for focus, uh, whenever I find my mind scattered or my focus everywhere, I'll just come back to the breath and really focus on the inhale and exhale and really deep breathing. And that can really help me focus on what's in front of me and come back um, to my work. And yeah, I'll often take breaks in the day to help with that. Awesome. Thank you so much um, for your time, Natasha. Um, and everyone that has joined us tonight.